It's Tuesday, November 16th, 2021, and the morning edition is live. On today's show, the country receiving a top tourism award. We have more details on the new COVID-19 rules. Bahamians find romance in World War II. And a corporate citizen spreading some Christmas cheer early. So let's start the morning off right. Morning edition. I'm Ladon Davis. And I'm Desmond. What's well, going on? Well, Desmond, you know, I'm still working on my menopause series, and I, I need you to drum up the support for men to actually come on, hit me up, so that I can speak to them about andropause. I know you guys have a, a ego thing where you don't want to yeah, share those kinds you know, of you things. Know, so you know. I need, I, I want it to be, you know, balanced because I have women, and mm -hmm. so I want men to actually. You know, hit me up. I'm not sold on that yet. I, I have some reservations. I know, as a, you know, as a man, know, man of funny, if you're that having, type of well, thing. If so, you're having mood swings or night sweats or I don't know. I'm not quite sold on that no? yet. No, I'm not. Uh, I'm not quite sold on that yet. But uh, we'll. It, it's it's an interesting feature, mm -hmm. and it's very informative from what you've yeah. been telling me off camera. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's going to be interesting to watch. Yeah. Be interesting to watch. I know we have an exciting, exciting, have an exciting show. show this some morning. good news in the program this morning. We continue to dominate the region in tourism. Bahama mm -hmm. receiving uh, a top award for being the family, a family top destination in the mm -hmm. region. I think um, Bahama as well. Bahama, Bahama receiving award Bahama as well. Bahama receiving yeah. Atlantis as well. Mm -hmm. So, so good news in tourism. The economy is looking pretty good. Yeah. Uh, on a steady path. Some good news from the Ministry of Finance, and we've got a whole lot of great things happening in this country. Um, I know, the wisdom, I know the Wisdom family, they're excited to be, um, I guess, honoring their World War veteran uh, parents. Right. Uh, I don't know if you know Evan, Evan Wisdom, Neville right. Wisdom, right. and their siblings. So yeah, we have a report from... And parents. you have an interesting feature on that. So mm -hmm. that, uh, some great stuff. COVID-19 continued to dominate mm -hmm. headlines, national headlines. We're on a good path. COVID-19 uh, cases trending downward, so which is pretty good. And. The Christmas festive season is here. I'm just all excited to eat. Um, I'm going to put my diet off until January. Really? January of 2022. And this holiday festive season where everything, everybody's <laughs> going to be eating everything. I I'm going to put it to rest. Have I'm you been running? Have rest. you been running? Have you I've been, been working running. Out? I want to get back into working out. Uh, and hopefully Charles Fisher can join me one of these mornings and we do a little, we can actually we do a little competition. Yeah. yeah, we need to record that as well. Yeah. Wow, so I want to see excited. that. Excited, yeah, oh, excited. Wow. I see and Janae is back yeah. in business. Uh -huh. This is a beautiful ornament. Uh, and Adon, you could use this because mm -hmm. I understand you're putting a Christmas tree together, yeah. right? Yeah. So yes, this I is am. a nice ornament here from Janae's and our question show, for the day. To the audience. Yeah. It's the audience. nice. Yeah. A nice it's ornament right there. Question for today, trivia question. What do persons traditionally put on top of their Christmas tree? Any ideas? I do. <laughs> I don't want to say. I know definitely a Christmas star, like the star Christmas on star. top of, yeah. Yeah, well, we will get top. that answer That's in like just a few minutes. On the top, yeah. Can you put the trivia up again for me? And uh, yeah, right there, 502-3855. What, what do persons traditionally put on top of the Christmas tree. If you're lucky, if you got the answer, give us a call right here at the station and we'll hook you up with this beautiful ornament from Janae's. I've got to go to Janae's and get some of these. They, they normally so. have some really good stuff for the yeah, holidays. So yeah, yeah we good. all need to go and, 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 and support them. Yeah. <laughs> this makes the Christmas so exciting. Mm. Okay, on the outside, let's take a look now at our forecast. A stationary front draped across the central Bahamas will produce bouts of active weather across portions of the Allen chain. Meanwhile, a strong, robust, high-pressure ridge will continue to build in its wake, generating fresh to strong breezes today. Beachgoers are urged to ex exercise extreme caution due to the risk of hazardous rip currents along northern and eastern shorelines. For the northwest and central Bahamas, partly cloudy conditions, warm, windy conditions with quick passing showers and a chance of a few thunderstorms near the frontal boundary. Small craft advisories in effect. Winds northeasterly, 15 to 25 knots. Seas 5 to 8 feet over the ocean. For the southeast Bahamas, partly sunny conditions, warm and breezy with a few isolated showers. A small craft caution is in effect. Winds are northeast to east, 15 to 20 knots and seas 4 to 6 feet over the ocean. The daytime high temperature, 82 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Overnight low temperatures, 68 degrees Fahrenheit. And let's look at our extended forecast for you. A mix of clouds and sun wrapping up to be a pretty good week. Significant concerns in the awarding of beaches and parks contracts coming to light in Parliament, highlighting a list of concerns in the House of Assembly on Monday, was Public Works and Utilities Minister the Honorable Alfred Sears, who says the matter was brought to his attention in a briefing he received on Friday from his permanent secretary and the beaches and parks management team. Shortly before the general elections, um, the contracts, all of the contracts were renewed. And according uh, to the management team, some of these uh, contractors had not performed satisfactorily. Nevertheless, it, there was instruction that every contract be renewed. Uh, secondly, um, some contracts were not signed uh, by the authority and work was um, the contractors purported to perform, notwithstanding the fact that the contract was only signed by the contractor, but not the authority. A report at Lover's Quarrel ended with two people injured and one in police custody. Police press liaison officer ASP Audley Peters tells us what officers found when they arrived at the scene. First responders met a female lying on the streets with abrasions about the body and a vehicle that had overturned on the scene. There was a domestic dispute with this female along with a, a gentleman. And as a result of that domestic dispute, the driver of the vehicle came through the street and ran the lady over with the vehicle. As he did so, he struck another vehicle. His vehicle came to a stop and he exited that vehicle and attempted to leave the scene. And so doing, the persons in the community was able to accost him, and so he's now in custody. No new COVID deaths on record, but we're still pulling in cases, 14 for November 14th. 12 of those cases right here on New Providence, with one each on Grand Bahama and Eleuthera. An even split of seven men and seven women make up the new COVID infections. Hospitalizations increased by one on Sunday to sit at 47, while nine of those people are in the, in the intensive care unit. The national debt toll remains unchanged at 665, with another 68 cases under investigation. Newly appointed executive chairman of the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas, Picewell Forbes, charting the way forward during his first staff meeting Monday. Chairman Forbes pointed to the need for a paradigm shift in order for the BCB to cement its spot as a news leader. We must look at them very closely relative to having a relationship with content and new content creators. We cannot operate in the same old hackneyed mindset we would have had in the past. Finding new markets, especially those with millennials and small business persons. Improve infrastructure and also elements of evolutionary development and technology. Do you want to travel this holiday season? Don't want to miss out on those blockbuster deals? Well, have you gotten your COVID-19 vaccine yet? Time is running out to travel for the holidays, and the Johnson & Johnson vaccine may be just what you need. It's one and done. Just one jab of this vaccine, and two weeks later, you're fully vaccinated and ready to shop. Protect yourself and your loved ones this holiday season. Schedule your vaccine appointment now. Nobody wants to get HIV, but if you do, it's not the end of the world. Being diagnosed early gives you a chance of living a long and healthy life. Testing is the only way to know for sure if you have HIV. And knowing your status means that you can protect yourself and your sexual partners. Getting an HIV test is quick, easy, free, and your results are 100% confidential. Get tested and know your status. Andrus is the number one born fishing destination on our planet. Sports fishermen visit our flats every year to participate in one of the most fulfilling outdoor activities known to man, fly fishing. And guess what? It's 100% sustainable. 
Without areas like the west side of Andres, sustaining this industry would be absolutely impossible. So let's take care of nature, and nature will take care of us. Do you want to travel this holiday season? Don't want to miss out on those blockbuster deals? Well, have you gotten your COVID-19 vaccine yet? Time is running out to travel for the holidays, and the Johnson & Johnson vaccine may be just what you need. It's one and done. Just one jab of this vaccine, and two weeks later, you're fully vaccinated and ready to shop. Protect yourself and your loved ones this holiday season. Schedule your vaccine appointment now. What you see on this television station is governed by IRCA's Code of Practice for Content Regulation. The Code of Practice covers matters relating to program content that are of concern to the community, such as local content, news, current affairs and programs for children, advertising, including political advertisements and the responsibilities associated with broadcasting in the Bahamas. The Code also covers aspects such as access services for the hearing and visually impaired and the procedure for lodging a complaint about anything broadcasted by this television station. The code is available on IRCA's website at www.ircabahamas.bs. To receive a copy of the code by mail or in person, you may telephone IRCA at 242-393-0234. Family Island dialing is toll free at 242-300-8722 or you may send a request by email to info at urkabahamas.bs. country's number one industry drawing attention across the region, the Caribbean Journal revealed the winners of its 2021 Traveler's Choice Awards. Atlantis Paradise Island Resort was named the best family island resort in the Caribbean. Best meetings destination in the Caribbean was awarded to Bahama Resort. And the Bahamas secured the award for best golf destination in the Caribbean. More than 53,000 of the world's largest community of experts on Caribbean travel cast their vote for the region's best luxury resort. Well, some good news there, LaDon. Switching gears now. The state of the country's emergency, now a thing of the past, but health officials advising Bahamans to exercise discipline during this period as new health regulations have now been introduced to steer this country through this pandemic. The Bahamian people are the ones who will uh, determine exactly how successful our rules would be. And we are pleading to everyone out there to follow the health care rules. The COVID-19 curfew and lockdowns have ended, but new and enhanced regulations governing the COVID-19 pandemic are now in effect. Minister of Health and Wellness, Honorable Dr. Michael Darville, cautioning residents not to let down their guard. There's rules on what we can do in restaurants. There's rules that what we can do in churches. There are rules of what we involve in as sporting activity. There's rules to enter and exit the country. And there's rules to govern us with our health care protocols and the public health measures that need to be in place. We are in a pandemic and we must govern ourselves. And we are asking the Bahamian people, we know the public health rules. It's important for us to be responsible. We need to open our economy. We need to be able to get people back to work. And we believe at the Ministry of Health, with our rules, we have striked a relatively decent balance to allow commerce to take place while we put and protect our loved ones, our, our schools, our teachers, as well as our families and the community. The new rules now in play under the new Health Services COVID-19 Prevention and Management of Community Spread Rules 2021 maintains the mandate to wear masks in public, social distancing protocols, sanitizing requirements, entry requirements into the country, and other health and safety measures. We would have a team, and that team will guide the policies that are implemented as it relates to the rules that falls under Section 29 of the Health Services Act, not the emergency orders, which is a, procl a proclamation uh, for emergency orders where civil liberties are taken away. With the rules, it's something completely different. As COVID-19 cases are on the decline, the country's health minister says his ministry will ramp up its vaccination and testing campaign, important tools in the COVID fight.
Remembrance Day may have been celebrated a few days ago, but the son of two late Bahamian War veterans is honoring the memory and legacy. The morning team caught up with this notable Bahamian to talk about how his parents found love while at war. My aunt always tells me how reluctant my grandfather, A.P. Roberts, was uh, to let his daughter, his oldest daughter, go to the war. And when they came back to Jamaica, he went to Wilmers. Uh, in Jamaica and then eventually studied accounting and then joined the army. That's former politician, nation builder, and owner of Florarama Neville Wisdom reminiscing on his parents, Dorothy and Walter Wisdom's fight for our freedom in World War II. Wisdom says his parental unit story and how they met and fell in love in the army is a unique one that was also built on a strong family bond. He was a member of the Signal Corps uh, and did um, uh, um, technological work at, 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 in the Signal Corps. And um, he met my mom, who had volunteered from the Bahamas. Uh, she is one of the um, 11 women mentioned in Ruth um, Goodridge's book, The Brave Eleven. But luckily, um, uh, she was able to make it back. She was a member of the ATS, uh, and she was able to make it back to Nassau. But by the time that she came back, um, she was married, she, and uh, uh, my oldest brother, Jerry, was actually born uh, in Jamaica as a result of that relationship. Due to COVID-19 restrictions, Wisdom says his family was unable to remember his parents in a special way, but later shared the tale of how his family paid homage to these two brave soldiers. Uh, when they came back to Nassau, they were both involved with the British Legion, uh, and, um, and I can recall, I mean, every Remembrance Day, um, uh, my parents would dress up in the uniforms, their old uh, army uniforms, and uh, would attend the church service uh, and uh, would march from uh, Blue Hill Road uh, uh, to the cenotaph, and uh, the ceremony would take place there. But that's not all, though. Wisdom says his father was not only a soldier, but someone who put service above self. In fact, he played a major role in the growth and developments at BTC and ZNS. Batelco was then on East Street um, North, and um, he started at Batelco. Um, then when ZNS was formed, he started there at ZNS at that same building. And uh, eventually he matriculated to become the general manager of ZNS. And um, I can recall him uh, for years uh, spending some time down in Grand Bahama as they set up ZNS um, radio in, in Grand Bahama. Sadly, Walter and Dorothy Wisdom died right here in the Bahamas at the ages of 59 and 76. And as we head to the break, we take a look back at today in Bahamian history. On November 16, 1957, Nassau International Airport was officially opened. The debt-free jet age terminal owned by the government was valued at more than $1.5 million. Also on November 16, 1975, thousands showed up at Elijah Obed return home as the country's first world boxing champion. Hey y'all, what's up? Hey, what's up? What y'all getting? Listen, I've been waiting, march down some love, see ya? Hi, I'm Matthew. I will be you guys waiter today. Can I take your order? Oh, uh, I've been doing stuff for some crew for dread. Y'all see this? Uh-uh, see? This ain't gonna work. Gondo. But how do? Don't leave our children with no fish in their future. Protect our sea. Protect our way of life. Protect the Bahamas. To learn how you can help, find us on Facebook at Bahamas Protected. See the future. Do 
Tune in Monday, November 22nd at 8 p.m. for Ed Table Talk Unplugged and hear about the Teaching Cadet Program. The Teaching Cadet Program has been active on every family island in the country, from Grand Bahama and Abaco in the north to Inagua in the south. The, the, the program has, has played an active role in cultivating teachers from all of those islands for the schools on all of those islands. This former teacher cadet now teaches high school. Many people just think teaching is just going to the board and standing up and talking. And so I believe that um, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, it has shown people that it is not <laughs> just standing up to the board because we have no board now to stand up to. And so now I believe that the program has really shown me all of the different aspects versus standing up to the board and just speaking. Join us at 8 p.m. Monday, November 22nd on this channel for Ed Table Talk Unplugged, produced by the Communications Section of the Ministry of Education and Technical and Vocational Training. Large beach and pool parties are not ideal in this COVID environment, but keeping just a few friends close while in the water is actually a good idea. So here's another pointer. They say the more the merrier, and when you're planning on spending a day of fun in the water, that might be what you want to do. Swimming with someone else, especially when doing aquatic activities, is a standard safety practice. If you're by yourself and there's an emergency, having someone to call for help or assist is much better than struggling alone. Swimming with a buddy, swimming with a buddy, not swimming alone, allowing you to have the ability to have somebody with you if you get into trouble. It's nice to be able to go in a social environment with a buddy and be able to talk and enjoy the environment. Crystal Darling, ZNS Digital Media. Still among the many communities taking advantage of natural resources, Carla Palmer spoke with a few residents. On almost every street corner in the Fox Hill community, there is one very noticeable common thread binding residents. Stalls of fresh vegetables and juicy fruits manned by vendors lining the roadsides. Patricia Higgs and Elaine Brown are two familiar faces. I sell my food festival every other day. If I have one, I have one. Sometimes I just stay in and relax. I am here from Sunday to Sunday. Every day of the week. It's obvious that Foxillians are residents firmly embedded in their cultural roots. A drive through any street corner paints the picture of fruit-bearing trees native to the Bahamas on almost every property, including vacant land. Foxillian fruits, them, these are most of these were planned by slaves and things, and they grow by them. When the boys go in the bush, they find them and they bring them and they sell them. We have a lot of um, avocado pears, dillies, sour sops, sugar apple, local ripe bananas. And it's really a good thing because people are really looking for local native stuff. And we buy everything here from Fox Hill, from around the little small farms and stuff. Another observation. Either the fruits and vegetables are of good quality and in high demand, or vendors welcome competition amongst themselves towards the bottom line, as the seasonal produce on sale are all the same from one stand to another. I don't figure there's no competition. Everybody been doing it. I say no competition. Yes, you make a couple dollars here. You know how to try save it. It's it's really good because I I, I do take care of me. I take care of me on it. Um, pay all my bills whatever. If I don't have it, I send them around the road there. So, in a competition. Living off the soil is clearly a way of life for Foxillians. Food shortage, they say, is not in their vocabulary. If you wanted to make a living, you got to do something. You can't depend upon the government every minute for this. Why would you be crying, crying, and you have fruits growing in your yard, you can make a couple of dollars off? Simple as tambourine. Tambourine, you would see tambourine all over, and you just drive past and just disregard tambourine. Please stop disregarding tambourine. If I take away everything off of my stand, everything right now, and just put tambourine sauce and tambourine ball and the dry tambourine into the bags here, I could take care of myself for the next three months and don't worry about nothing. Ernest Morrison is a son of the soil. He's known for climbing the tallest trees for fruits to sell and consume. See the Hawkins, kill plenty coconut tree and dance. When I was young, I was told they were the trees. Going up, sweet. Coconut trees all around here. Dilly trees all around here. You couldn't get enough. 
as eager as residents are to sell, customers are to buy. And that's just the way Foxillians like and appreciate it. Oak Tree Medical Center donating $10,000 to the Royal Bahamas Police Force Christmas Tree Lighting Initiative. The funds will help officers spread joy and love to scores of children who will attend this year's ceremony. Grateful for the donation was National Crime Prevention Office Director, Superintendent Anthony Roll. The event is scheduled for, for December the 3rd at the police headquarters, 5.30 at the Rose Garden, um, where we intend to uh, bring in children from, from our fallen officers. Our officers who has lost their lives during the, the pandemic. We want to bring them uh, into headquarters and, and try to enlighten their lives. Because you know, in, in some instances, uh, most of them or all of them are still mourning the death of their, their parents or their loved ones. So, you know, our theme um, is celebrating the gift of peace and hope. And you know, we all need hope. Uh, during this time. So. Oak Tree Medical Center's director, Dr. Don DeVoe, says a donation is part of their efforts to give back to the community. The event here is about celebrating the gift of peace and hope with the National Crime Prevention at the Royal Bahamas Police Force. And so when we think of community, I want it to be synonymous with Oak Tree. Uh, and so everything we do, we're from, by, and for the community. And, and that's what we're trying to do here. And for us, to us, this is more of a mandate. And you, it's akin to having a company. And the community is our greatest investors and our greatest shareholders and our greatest stakeholders. And, and so us doing this is actually us giving back dividends to the company. Nobody wants to get HIV, but if you do, it's not the end of the world. Being diagnosed early gives you a chance of living a long and healthy life. Testing is the only way to know for sure if you have HIV. And knowing your status means that you can protect yourself and your sexual partners. Getting an HIV test is quick, easy, free, and your results are 100% confidential. Get tested and know your status. As an artist, I travel all over the world and I find inspiration all around me. In the people, and especially the environment. I love the Bahamas with all its natural beauty. From Abaco in the north to Inagua in the south and all the wonderful and colorful islands in between. But we must all do our part to keep the Bahamas healthy and clean, now and for the future generations. That's why I want you to find a little time to do your part. I'm doing my part because I care. Do you? Well, Donna, oh, looks like we've got, yeah. we've got an uh, answer for our trivia, right? Yeah, yeah. so tell the, tell the audience. Who's the winner? The winner, Barbara Rogers. And the question is, what do persons traditionally put on that, put on top of their Christmas tree? Angel. I was thinking an the star. The yeah, star? I was putting the star Yeah, I was there. thinking the star, too, but an angel. Yeah. Barbara Rogers, our lucky winner for this morning. And she's going to get this beautiful ornament provided by Janae's. They've got some wonderful pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great, yeah, we great have to go piece. in and check it out. Then. Yeah, we definitely have to go and check it out and see what's happening. All, All right. right. Enjoyed that Fox Hill story. Amazing. Yeah. Um, you know, I remember as a kid growing up, my mom, every Saturday, we would go in Fox Hill, mm -hmm. Fox Hill community, and we would find a wide assortment of fruits mm -hmm. and vegetables. Mm -hmm. just, a, just a great story. I love those avocado pears. Yeah. I'm sorry. Amazing, I love Amazing, eh? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. We've got a great show tomorrow. Charles. Charles Fish is going to be back in the chair. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. And I know he's excited. <laughs> he's very excited about coming back. But we have a, have a great show tomorrow. I have, I have an education feature. Mm -hmm. um, some great, I'm going to feature some great South Androsian teachers mm. who are making an impact. And so, um, pretty good stuff. All right, yeah. so we'll have to stay tuned for that. That's right. All right, and be sure to stay tuned into the ZNS Network for news as it happens, TV and radio updates throughout the day. Then you can tune into the Northern Edition at 6.30 and the Bahamas Tonight at 7. And that's a wrap for us this morning for the entire team. I'm Desmond. That's a wrap. Have a good Tuesday. Have a great morning, everyone.